Hi there, welcome to another video in my series where I'm looking at finding the mean or standard deviation from a normal distribution when you're given the probability of being greater than or less than an observed value. Well in this video I've got a question here where we've got to find the standard deviation sigma from this normal distribution where we have a random variable x that's normally distributed with a mean of 12 and the variance is sigma squared. So we're given the probability of being greater than 6 is equal to 0.85 and we've got to find the standard deviation. If you watched the earlier videos you should possibly have some idea of how to go about this. So give you a moment just to pause the video if you want to uh, try it. But I'm going to be taking you slowly through how we do this either using a Casio ClassWiz calculator or similar calculator or you might want to use the percentage points of a normal distribution table here. Whatever, I'll show you both methods. So the first thing I'd do is sketch a normal distribution graph for the random variable x. So we've got the mean of 12 there. And underneath I'd draw the standardized normal distribution graph, z. So it has a mean of 0 and remember since the variance is 1 the standard deviation sigma would be 1. So we need to figure out where we're going to place the observed value 6 on this graph here. Well the area to the right of it is 0 0.85. Knowing that the whole area under the graph is 1 then the area to the right if it's got to be 0 0.85 means that x equaling 6 has to be placed to the left of 12 so that this area is going to be 0 0.85 okay so just pop that in there that means that the area to the left of 6 we'll mark it in brown say that's going to be 1 minus 0 0.85 so that's going to be 0 0.15. So we've got to work out the observed value of z that corresponds with the observed value here of 6. So by dropping a line down from here onto this standardized normal graph this would be our observed z value. And if we're going to use a calculator to work out z we need the area to the left of it okay so that would be that area there which would correspond to the area up here 0 0.15 if we're using tables then we need the area to the right of z as I'll show you in a short while now remember that the standardized value z always equals the observed value from the graph here x minus the mean mu all over the standard deviation sigma and if we rearrange this equation for sigma by multiplying both sides by sigma and then dividing by z we would get sigma equals x minus the mean mu all over z so we just need to calculate this z value so using the calculator if you've seen the previous videos just select the menu option 7 takes us to the probability distributions option 3 the inverse normal so I press 3 there and the area represents the probability of being to the left of z the cumulative probability as I showed you in an earlier video it's now 0 0.15 so we just enter 0 0.15 press equals to enter that Standard deviation is set at 1, which is what we need. Remember the variance is 1 for this graph here, so the standard deviation will be 1. If we go down further, the mean mu is set at 0, which is what we need. So just press equals, and we've got the z value of minus 1.0364. I'll just jot that in here. So we've got z equals minus point. 0, 3, 6, 4, and so on. And so it's just a question of substituting this value in for z 
the observed value x is 6 and the mean mu is 12. If you substitute those values in and then just work this out, you'll find that you get 5.7 for the standard deviation to one decimal place. Now, if we were using tables, which you'd find in your formula book, they give the percentage points of the normal distribution. In other words, they give the probability of being greater than an observed value Z. Only problem is Z is on the right hand side of the mean zero. So if we go back to our standardized graph here, we can use the symmetries of the graph. We can reflect this Z here across the mean here. And so if we just put it on this side, let's say we call this Z1. This area here will be the same as the area we've got there, 0.15. So just mark that in there, 0.15. That's the probability of being greater than Z1, our p-value. And by looking down this column here for p for 0.15, I see 0.1500. And the corresponding Z value is 1.0364. So the Z1 value, just from the tables, you can see then is 1.0364. And if we then reflect it back on the other side of the zero, it's clearly going to be negative 1.0364. So by using the tables, then we can just carry on as we did down here, ending up with the standard deviation as being 5.7. However, I do think using the Casio class whiz calculator makes this a lot easier. But there you go, two options for you. And I hope you've been able to see how to do that. So thanks for listening and hopefully I'll see you in another video.